Like many fantasy sequels, Guild Wars 2 takes place in the same land that the original installment did. However, Guild Wars 2 takes place hundreds of years after the events of Guild Wars 1. But everything being in the same world allows for history to be retold. And a great reminder of this is the several important landmarks you can find today that were also present in Guild Wars 1. In this video, I'd like to draw attention to some of these and explain them. Now for the record, I've just picked out a few here that interest me. I know there are a lot of them out there. And I wanted to make sure that each of these had some sort of significance to to the game or the story. You know what I mean? A little bit more to it than just they were there in Guild Wars 1. Because technically you could argue that entire mass of regions are returning landmarks because hey, they were there. The first two are the Temple of the Ages and the Reclaimed Chantry. I'm going to lump these two together because they're very similar. I've already talked about these actually in one of my very early videos. But for those who don't know, I'll talk about them again. They both served a similar purpose to a raid lobby. Players would gather there to form groups to challenge and game content. Temple of the Ages can be found over in Queensdale down in the swamp. It's now just a point of interest. You can see a few old statues of the gods and you might notice they look different from the statues we have today. That's because these are are the same old models that they used in Guild Wars 1. Lore-wise, they say the tsunami that happened after Orr rised out of the sea caused the Temple of the Ages to crumble and sink into the swamp. If you look at a bird's eye view of the Guild Wars 1 version, you can see the same area with all the statues. Now let's look at the Reclaimed Chantry. This one can be found in Jahai Bluffs, and it hasn't been destroyed, so it looks very similar to how it did in Guild Wars 1. Now today, it's just an area with a renowned heart. It also has a similar setup to Temple of the Ages with all the statues of the gods. And like I said, it serves the same purpose. Some of the content you could access here was Fissure of Woe, the Underworld, or the Gate of Anguish. Doomlore Shrine, a personal favorite of mine, found up north in the Blood Legion homelands, specifically Grothmar Valley. Doomlore Shrine was a mission outpost found in the Eye of the North expansion. The main significance of it was it was another location where players would form groups to attempt endgame dungeons that were found nearby. To enter some of the dungeons in Guild Wars 1, you would have to leave the outpost and then physically run your characters to the entrance. And Doomlore Shrine happened to be the closest location for many popular dungeons. Although I remember some dungeons had a really long walk to get there. But probably one of the most popular dungeons here was the Cathedral of Flames, which you could enter directly from the outpost. The gates of the cathedral are also still there today, although now they're destroyed and in ruins. Another fun fact, the final boss of the Cathedral of Flames, Lady Murakai, is also still in the game. I've spoken about her in one of my returning characters videos, so if you're interested, it's there. Next one, we are staying in the same region but heading south to Kralkatorix Emergence Zone. This one I guess is a bit of a technicality. The area was there, but it looked completely different. This was also part of the Eye of the North expansion, and it was just part of the explorable area that you could go and see. But the one key difference, in Guild Wars 1, Kralkatorix was still there. Now he was just in slumber, but part of his back was exposed and sticking out of the ground. You could see this on the map, and you could actually go there and see it in person. If I remember correctly, before Guild Wars 2 was announced, I don't think players totally knew what this was. It just looked like a giant metal spiky mountain range. But then I think after the announcement, people began theory crafting that this was part of a dragon. Now today, since Kralkatorik has left, he has left a massive gaping hole in the landscape where he used to lie. Next is the Searing Cauldron. This is one of the cauldrons that was used by the Flame Legion to bring forth the Searing. Okay, now quick lore lesson for anybody who doesn't no. Back in Guild Wars 1, there was an event called the Searing. The Char Flame Shamans used powerful magic to rain down flaming meteors over Ascalon, which ended up burning it all to the ground. To do this, they channeled their magic in these Searing Cauldrons. And this Searing Cauldron in Guild Wars 2 is one of the last cauldrons that hasn't been destroyed. Or it might even be the last one, I'm not actually sure. Also, I'm not sure, but this might be the same exact one from Guild Wars 1 that used to be called the Cauldron of Cataclysm. The wiki article seems to imply that, and the general location on the map seems to line up as well. Today you can find it in Iron Marches near Iron Head Lake. It's now a Hero Point challenge, and it's also part Part of a few collections like legendary weapons and the sky scale. Next we have Fort Aspenwood or Aspenwood Research Facility as it's called today. It can be found in the Echovald Wilds down in Cantha, originally designed by the Kurzic architect Lord Stein zu Helzer. It was built here due to its strategic location on their border with the Luxons. 
and it's one of the very few Kurzik buildings that's still standing today. It may be just a simple point of interest today, but back in Guild Wars 1, it was a whole lot more. It was actually a PvP challenge area between Kurzik and Luxon players. The general gameplay was similar in nature to a castle siege. Luxons would attack, and Kurziks would try to defend. There were different spawn points that could be captured, gates to be destroyed or defended, and the end goal was killing Master Architect Gunther if you were on the Luxon team, or protecting him if you're on the Kurzik team. Now I think that is much cooler than what it is today. Although today there is a big Jade Brotherhood event that happens there, which is cool, I guess. Zendai Jun, also found in Kantha over on Xinjie Island, or Seitung Province as the map is actually called. Back in Guild Wars Factions, it was a mission that was part of the main storyline. As a player, you'll enter the area to search for the source of a plague and put a stop to it. However, upon reaching the temple, you will discover the Mark of Shiro Taigachi. For those who don't know, back in the Guild Wars Faction story, there was a plague that was spread across Kantha. This was done by Shiro Taigachi in an attempt to see control of the Canthan Empire, since he was able to control and influence those afflicted with the plague. Now today, the Zendaijun Valley and Temple are pretty similar to how they used to be. You can go to the same temple, the same valley, same caves that were there in the mission, but now they've added a little mini dungeon below the temple. The whole area now is mostly populated by wildlife or spirits of the dead Ministry of Purity who will attack you on site. Okay, so that's gonna do it for now. Like I said before, these are just a few of the many returning landmarks. These are just some of my personal favorites. If there's any others that you like, feel free to let me know and share with the group. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this or found it interesting, and bye for now.